Coding is a lot more fun if the code you're trying to read is straightforward, easy to understand, easy to change without breaking it. An important part of that is writing conditional logic in a way that is easy to read and reason about. I want to tell you about a technique, decompose conditional. In this video, I'll show you what that is and how you can use it to make your code easier to work with. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. Famously, Martin Fowler has said, any fool can write code that a computer can understand. Good programmers write code that humans can understand. So software at some level is made out of words and it matters that we choose good descriptive terms for the person who's gonna read it later. And that's even more true when you're coding with a Gen AI assistant, which might generate something that works, but not necessarily something that is maintainable and understandable to future maintainers of that code. So when you've just written some code, you, you need to read it through and take the chance to reflect on what somebody else looking at this, what they may, might need to know to understand it, and think about how you could make perhaps just small improvements to the words that you're using to make it easier. This picture here kind of sketches a conditional statement and it's got three parts and two different conditions. And I've highlighted the colored blocks that could be extracted as methods. And that would give you the opportunity to name those parts. Of course, those names would be entirely incidental to your compiler, but they could give a future colleague reading that code a lot better ideas about what the code does. Not only your colleagues, your Gen AI coding assistant will also get better information from these names, so it will give you more relevant help and suggestions. So extracting all of those methods, that's the essence of the decompose conditional refactory. Let me show you what I mean. Today I'm going to work on the tennis refactoring carter, which is a nice one because it's got really good tests and six or seven different variants with different refactoring challenges. But before I start writing any code and doing any refactoring, I just want to show you that I'm switching off my AI assistant. Um, and this is basically because this is a, an exercise that's been on the internet on GitHub for many years, and it's in the training data of all the AI models. So the kind of suggestions it gives you for this exercise are far too good doesn't behave the same in your production code. And when we're training like this, I'm doing an exercise in order to improve my skills. I don't want to learn to rely on a tool that isn't going to do the same for me in my production code. So I'm just going to rely on the normal deterministic tools that are already in my IDE that don't use AI. Um, they're very good and they do what I need, in fact, to support me in what I'm trying to practice today. So what I'm trying to practice today is basically writing good names and making code more readable. So I've got this uh, example here in um, Tennis Game 6. It's got this method um, get score, And uh, this method is a little bit long. It doesn't all fit on the screen if I just scroll through it. So uh, it would, it's a good candidate for extracting some methods with good names. And it's got some very obvious code paragraphs like this one here. So this bit of code here has got this comment tie score and even the variable name tie score. Um, which makes it very obvious you could extract a method called tie score. And it does that for me very easily with the tool. I can inline that variable, remove the comment, check my tests are still passing. These deterministic refactoring tools are very good though. I'm not expecting any test failures for that. So that was um, actually made the code a little bit shorter, gave me uh, a new method, and also makes it kind of obvious what this is now. This is clearly is tie. And that also makes the code, I think, a little clearer. If I go on to the next part of this conditional, I've got another section here, which is clearly a code paragraph, which I can also name, end game score. Um, and then I don't need this local variable or that comment. And again, my tests should be fine after that change. Um, so uh, I've just extracted another method, which obviously means I know what this is called as well, is end game. So this is, um, this conditional is starting to get a lot more concise and have more words in it, in the code. And uh, this section again is clearly regular score. And then I do the same treatment, remove the comment that I no longer need, check my tests. So now I've moved to a position where the get score method 
all fits on the screen and it reads very nicely. If it's a tie, we get the tie score. If it's the end game, we get the end game score. Otherwise, we get the regular score. So this this refactoring that I've just done um, was fairly straightforward to do with the deterministic refactoring tools and has made this code more readable for the next person who comes along. Okay, I'm going to go to the tennis game three variant now because this has got a similar get score method, but it's not quite as well commented as the uh, the previous version and the names are truly awful. Uh, so the challenge with this one is that the code is is got these really short variable names that are, are not very descriptive. So I might try and do the same treatment here, do the, the same decompose conditional refactoring. So I might try and extract this as a method and score. That sounds plausible. Let's do that. Um, and this other section uh, in the else clause, suggesting it calls that win for, that's... It, it, one of the results it could return is win four. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, if I'm decomposing this conditional com properly, I need to also name my condition B. Yeah. So here I've done essentially the same refactoring that I just did on tennis game six, but you can tell I'm skeptical here because this, this reads really badly. If B returns score, else win four. So that just tells me nothing about what actually is going on. If I want to understand what this function does, I need to at least go and read these methods. And then looking at these methods doesn't really give me much help, actually. So decomposing this condition like this with these names has not improved the code. It's not made it more readable. So if you're going to do this refactoring, you need to choose good names. And that's why I turned off the AI assistant, because the assistant has seen so many solutions, it knows the names. So uh, if you're going to work on this one, try and think for yourself and do it without the, the AI thinking of the names for you. And hopefully you'll end up with something that looks more like what I've done here in Tennis Game 6, a method that's much more concise, where you don't need to go in and look at the contents of all those methods you extracted, because the names are so good and so descriptive. Going back to this picture of this conditional logic, what I did in this demo was extract a method for each piece of that conditional. So I hope I've given you some ideas about how you could do that when you're working in your code. Decompose conditional is this process of adding these additional methods to explain the various parts. The key, of course, is choosing good names. And sometimes you realize you've done this extraction and the new methods didn't help and the code isn't any more readable. So you do need to develop a good design judgment. Maybe I can help you with that. We've got a lot more materials and training available via the Saman Society that I run. We have a website and I do encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. Happy coding. <laughs>